Hi everybody, this is Gary Dean with Sentiment Timing and this is our free weekly video report for Wednesday, October 19th, 2016. So I'm trying to get this in before the debate starts. So let's get started. Uh, the markets have pretty much been doing uh, what we've been expecting them to do. Uh, hasn't really been all that exciting, but they've been, um, it, you know, pretty much doing what we've been expecting. So what we do is we, we kind of uh, predict when the markets are going to reverse and where. And what we do is we use uh, time, price, and emotions. And we're one of the only really services, we're a handful of services that actually uh, tracks investor sentiment and Woody Dorsey's uh, considered by many as the pioneer of investor sentiment because he's been uh, tracking and charting the same sentiment data uh, for 40 years and there's really not many people out there that have done that so we that's the emotional part of it and and when you're able to track how people are feeling about the market um, I've explain this a few times uh, where it's it's almost like playing Texas Hold'em uh, or poker and being able to look at your you know your competitors cards because when you know how people feel about the market um, if everybody's expecting it to go up um, it most likely it's going to be topping out uh, up there now it doesn't mean it has to go straight down no but what happens it's going to have it's going to go higher in fits and bits where it might go up 20 points and pull back 15, go up 20, pull back 15. And stuff like that is just wears uh, both the bulls and the bears out. But that is only going to happen uh, when everybody is bullish on the market. And it, it's vice versa when everybody's bearish on the markets because the sentiment is always going to be at extremes uh, when a trend reversal is about to take place. Now, there's both you know, a topping process and a bottoming process, and they act totally different. Um, that's what Woody, you know, Woody's the master at this, and he knows how to read it and, and what to expect. But, um, you know, that's the emotional aspect of it, and, and that's really what we back. And we, uh, Woody does technical timing profiles, and that predicts when the dates are scheduled to, uh, to reverse, the trend reversal. And that's important because it's uh, it links together where you're you're able to control your emotions, where if you know – not to be buying the stock market until after the 19th or it's going to be choppy heading into the 19th. Um, you know, you, you kind of sidestep that stuff. And when people that uh, actually uh, trade off of price and, you know, whether it be Elliott Wave or uh, just using Fibonacci levels and all this, if you don't know when the markets are scheduled to reverse, uh, it's almost impossible to figure out where. So the first piece that we do is we, we look at when uh, the, the trend is supposed to reverse. And uh, one of the best traders to ever live, uh, W.D. Gann, um, he, he had said that time is the most important aspect of uh, of trading uh, than, than there is. And, and price is used to kind of after you know when to expect it. And that's, we, we're following the same guidelines, uh, but yet we have sentiment to back up these, uh, these moves. And there's times where things are just going to be boring. Uh, the market's not going to be exciting all the time. Uh, but when it is, you're able to take advantage of these big moves and make 60 to, you know, 100, 200 S&P points. Uh, it, it, but you may get some chop that's just going to go 30 or 40 points. And uh, that is, you know, that that's really what we want to, you know, what we concentrate on. We're not really worried about the big ass, the, the big picture. So the reason why that works is because human beings and the markets are irrational. And there's always going to be an irrational element at work, and that's what creates market opportunities. So we identify them by uh, Woody Dorsey's uh, proprietary sentiment data, as well as his technical timing indicators to predict when it's going to reverse, and then we, we match in regular technicals into it. And really, the way that it works is when, when it's at the euphoria here, typically that's going to be happening when the, there's a scheduled top. To be coming and what's going to happen is we're looking for price as far as where things are going to turn once you get into this this phase this is where you get the choppy action and, and what i mean by that is the market could still go higher into the euphoria 
But what happens is you start getting these big up and down moves. And so the, the easy money is made when you're long and you're able to ride it up. And then the way the big money works is they, they actually, once they get into this area, they're, they're now unloading their long positions and building a short position. And what happens is once we get into the panic capitulation, they're closing their shorts and they're buying and they're, they're taking, they're, they're getting the easy money on both ends of it. And that, that we, we try to follow that same script and pretty much we do because uh, we know when to expect the, uh, the markets to reverse. We, we have a pretty good idea as far as where, because we're just basing technical analysis off of that. And we also know where sentiment is. So, we know if everybody's looking up and we're in this euphoria phase and there's a, a you know we're supposed to have a technical turn date down guess what you just short and you don't really worry about things and that's controlling your emotions so <clears throat> This is what I'm talking about with time. When it's, you know, when the markets are heading up, making new all-time highs, everybody's looking up. But when there's a technical turn date, then what happens and you have everybody in this euphoric phase, this is the types of moves that happen. And you can see when you know when to expect a move, you can make a ton of money with this. So I left you on the 20, uh, this I was showing you on Sept from September 27th that, uh, we were expecting uh, weakness, and I, always, I had this blacked out because I wasn't going to give you the dates. So since uh, September 27th, we knew that we were going to have fits and bits or we are going to have uh, a short bias heading into the 19th, which is today. Uh, so that was our, you know, yes, the market went up yesterday and it went up today, but for the most part, it, it's been just going, you know, nowhere. So it, it was one of those things that we made the, uh, you know, the, the easy money on on the initial drop here because we are short. Then we covered and we, we haven't really had, even though we were anticipating that the market could go lower, there was no pounding the table on the short side because we already had the big move. So you just cover your shorts and you what you do is you step back and you wait for the next uh for the next setup so here we know that uh you know things are going to be choppy and and for the next couple of weeks and in post view uh post vote the election we may see strength into and this is the date so we know when to expect the strength to head into and that's when you're going to be looking to short you can see sentiments just kind of been chopping up and down so there's no clear advantage as far as uh you know basing because we don't really have a turn date that's coming up until after a couple of weeks sentiments been kind of going nowhere we have the elections that are in front of us so you're going to get a lot of chopping action and what that means is you can go off of regular technical analysis but you just want to uh if, if you you know normally trade say ten thousand dollars on a trade swing it down to five thousand if, if you look for swing trades that are going to last seven to ten days bring them to two to three days you take little scalps and you just adjust the way the market you know it, what, it, what it's giving you so if we take a look at the regular charts here this is what i'm talking about we were short here uh right pretty much at the exact top we had the big move down so once we were at support we said cover shorts or you know put a stop in place because we're probably going to chop around would i buy no we wouldn't buy because we weren't really looking for the actual low to hit until this time frame and you can see when we had the spike up we had a big drop down this move right here most 90 percent of the people missed it because they gapped it up 15 points that was really the move so there's you know they didn't allow anybody in this because anybody who bought here got shaken out with the big move down so if you just stayed on the sidelines just you, may, you know you missed some chop but the thing is the big move took place and that's why we were not pushing the short side because we were approaching when we were expecting a low we knew we had some sentiment readings that were that were pretty bearish uh we we didn't really have any huge technical divergences in place but we are at support so you don't press the short side and and that's you know if you covered at the at this you know 2119 you know now now you're sitting here you're you're fully cash and you're you're waiting to look to short now i took a piece of a short position uh towards towards the close today and i took it towards the close yesterday and that's because we're approaching some some resistance uh we're getting uh pretty we're kind of neutral on that but if we take a look at the 15 minute chart 
I'm oh, sorry about that. Um, what you can see is that there there actually could be jo uh, trying to form an ascending triangle. So if they're going to be doing that, then then what that is looking for is a move to come down someplace into this uh, 2132. So again, I'm lowering my time frame and lowering my point thing. It, I, uh, if we do get down here tomorrow, what I'm going to do is take some off and I'll hold it in case we do see some ugliness happen and then just put a stop at my entry. So that's really how I'm going to manage this because, A, we have bearish divergences in place. Two, we're at resistance, and things have been a little bit choppy, and, and that's why I think we need a little bit of a breather. Now, my stop's at 2155, so if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. It's not going to be the end of the world. So that's pretty much it. I wouldn't get a, really the main takeaway with today would be don't get too aggressive uh, on either side. Wait for the elections to pass us before doing that. And then, uh, and then from there, you know, that's when you will start probably getting a better uh, idea as far as direction. So, um, anybody that's going to be, I don't even know if the, if we're putting out a, a special today. I know there. If we do, it's going to be one of our last ones because we're just going to be doing the nine ninety nine for two weeks, and there's not going to be a special after that. But if there is one, this will be, this will be, in, the pat, in the next say ten days, it's going to be our last one. But anybody that signs up, you're going to get a free membership to Markets Path. I do these types. Of video reports every night i do morning notes and we have a trade room and i do some uh, some email trades if i'm going to be making a trade i just send out what i'm going to be taking so with that uh enjoy the rest of your night and i'll talk to you guys next week